Greetings and welcome to another episode of Canadian History X. Now today we're going to be talking about something that has had its image somewhat warped in the Western world. We're going to talk about the swastika, specifically swastikas and hockey in Canada. And there seems to be this unique interaction and relationship between the two at least prior to about 1930, 1939. Now, when we think of the swastika, we think of it as a symbol of hate of Nazi Germany, but its origins actually go back thousands of years. And it used to mean something very different and something very different from hate. So let's delve into what the swastika was and how it relates to hockey in Canada. The swastika can be found throughout many cultures, and it's been found engraved on objects dating back as far as 15,000 years. Bronze Age stone carvings in England feature the swastika, and it became a common symbol on the Indian subcontinent about 5,000 years ago. Unlike its modern view in the Western world, the swastika is a sacred symbol in Hinduism and Buddhism. In Hinduism, the word for swastika comes from its Sanskrit roots and means making of goodness or marker of goodness. It was used as an emblem in doorways of homes and temples as well. Even in the Western world, it was a symbol of good luck, and that is where the story of the Fernie swastikas comes in. Now in the early 1920s, Fernie was a small British Columbian mountain town, founded only two decades previous thanks to the abundant mining in the area. The coal industry is the reason the town even exists after the community was founded by the Crow's Nest Pass Coal Company in 1897. As with many communities in Canada, hockey was a popular pastime and in 1918, the first recorded women's hockey game took place between teams composed of teachers and bank clerks in Fernie. It was in this coal mining mountain town that the Fernie swastikas emerged in 1922. Originally called the Fernie Ladies Hockey Team, the team changed its name to the swastikas that year. With uniforms that featured red sweaters and white pants, the swastikas became a popular team. The year of their renaming, the team played in the Calgary Winter Carnival and took on the Calgary Regents, and the Swastikas won the game 4 0. One year later, on January 24th, Fernie once again took on the Regents and defeated them 3 0. This earned the team the chance to play for the Alpine Cup at the Banff Winter Carnival. Established in 1917 and running until 1935, the Alpine Cup was the women's hockey trophy at the carnival and had been won four times by the Regents, once by Edmonton, and once by Vancouver by 1923. By defeating the Vancouver Amazons 2-0, who were the defending champions, the Swastikas were crowned as the Alpine Cup champions. The Calgary Regents attempted to win the cup from Fernie during the carnival, but were unable to defeat the Swastikas. When the Fernie swastikas returned home to Fernie, they were greeted by throngs of children who had been let out of school early to welcome the champion Fernie swastikas. The Fernie pipe band was playing, an RCMP honor guard was there to welcome them and drive them through the city as everyone cheered, and in the evening there was a gala to celebrate their accomplishment in winning the Alpine Cup. Now, the following year in 1924, they attempted to defend their title, but would fall 1-0 to Canmore. Following 1924, the team began to change as members moved on to other things. Elaine Ross would move to Edmonton and play for the Edmonton Monarchs and win the Alpine Cup in 1926, and four consecutive Alpine Cups from 1929 to 1932. Team founder Mary Dragon would move to the States. With the founding of the Alberta Amateur Hockey Federation, the Swastikas only played teams from Alberta at the Alpine Cup. Since their only British Columbian competition was the Cranbrook Canucks, their ability to increase their skill level against teams was limited. The Swastikas would play no more games in 1925, but they would make one more appearance at the Alpine Cup in 1926, falling to the Edmonton Monarchs. Now, as I said at the beginning of this episode, there is this unique relationship with the swastika and ice hockey, at least there's a few examples. And we focused on the Fernie swastikas, but there are some other examples of swastikas and hockey teams around the same period. The Windsor swastika, based out of Windsor, Nova Scotia, were a hockey team from 1905 to 1916 that toured through the east coast of Canada, playing other professional teams. A championship team, the Windsor Swastikas captured the Western Nova Scotia Amateur Hockey League Championship and the Halifax Herald and Mail Trophy. In 1916, the team disbanded as many of its members left to fight in the First World War. 
Among its players were several notable individuals, including the father of a no future Nova Scotia Premier, two inductees to the Nova Scotia Sports Hall of Fame, and Blaine Sexton, who left the team to fight in the First World War and was instrumental in developing hockey in the United Kingdom. After the war, he moved to England with his English wife and began to develop hockey in the island nation. In 1924, he won a bronze medal in hockey with the United Kingdom at the Winter Olympics. Identified as Mr. Hockey in England, he would help to expand the sport into other areas of Europe as well. He would found the London Lions in 1924 and the team would win the British League title, the Patton Cup, in 1930. In 1933, Sexton retired and would be inducted into the British Ice Hockey Hall of Fame in 1950. Those are two well-known examples of teams with swastikas on their jersey, but there was also the Edmonton Swastikas, a team that existed around 1915. Unfortunately, very little information still exists about that team. So now we saw these three teams with swastikas on their jerseys, and the chances are, because of the change of its image in the Western world, it's unlikely we'll ever see another swastika on a jersey in Canada. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Canadian History X, and if you did, please let me know. You can reach me at crwbaird at gmail.com. You can find me on Twitter at C-R-A-I-G-B-A-I-R-D, and you can find me on Instagram at B-A-I-R-D-O 37.